Hello and welcome to the 15 years of Faderhead a music video throwback show. I am Faderhead and in this show I'll be playing all my music videos from the last 15 years for you. And to make it a little more interesting, before every video I'll be giving some background info and some context and I will also put little text annotations into the videos themselves whenever um, you know they come to my mind while editing. These annotations might fly by really fast, but you can always you know, stop the video and read them and then continue streaming later if you want. There were 19 official videos for singles in these last 15 years. So uh, that's gonna be very long and we'll be doing part one today and part two tomorrow. But for those who can't make it tomorrow, I'll be putting up the whole show on my YouTube channel, which is uh, of course, youtube.com slash faderhead. With that said, I hope you enjoy this little trip down memory lane with me and let's get right to it. Girly Show. This was the very first music video I was ever involved in or in myself. And uh, it was shot by Marco Ribbe in the basement of his Lost Legends store in Heilbronn in Germany. And for reasons I don't remember, Marco had a very good video camera, a Panasonic something something. I don't remember the, t the, the name of the camera, but uh, we decided to just use it to try and make a music video, even though we had no idea how to do that. And back then I was also in a digital art group called Raster. And one of the guys there offered to edit the video for me because I had no idea how to do that. And he was a professional video and I think graphics editor for a Dutch TV station. So. Uh, we shot the video and I sent him the hard drive and then I never heard back from him ever again. <laughs> and uh, so Marco and I had to learn how to edit video. And I mean, that's the kind of adversity that you face that later in life gives you skills that make you better. From today's perspective, I would say the video is pretty cringy, but so were kind of all music videos back then, if you look at them 13 years later from today's point. Interestingly, the video got flagged for nudity because there are naked plastic mannequins in it, so nipples are bad. And now it's only watchable for people over 18 on YouTube. Hope you enjoy it. Are you feeling pretty? Universally adored. And keep the city busy. And demanding your war. Are you feeling awesome? Everybody loves the queen. Your state of blossoms High and low and in between High and low and in between Your thighs I'll feel I'll feel I can't stand all your talk Your little girl show Softly spoken To portray a human touch Are you lost and lonely? And in need of one who dreams Just to steal the image Mind and heart and
rap, I'm just faking But you can't stand the duration What do you think? I'm a spaceman You just can't match my moves This video was also shot by Marco Ribbe. <laughs> this time not in the basement of his store, but at his house and garage. I was heartbroken at the time about a lady and the song reflected that. So Marco and I spent, I think, two days shooting different scenes that uh, visualized the lyrics as, as well as we could. Back then, I decided that the sunglasses and mohawk look absolutely did not fit the style and the message of the song, which is uh, why you can only see the bottom half of my face when singing at the piano. This is Exit Ghost. Right. 
This is the big one. We spent two days shooting this in an empty warehouse in Hamburg. I was directing again and surprise, Marco Ribbe was filming again. And uh, I think there were about 40 people on set most of the time because I had spent, I don't know, six to eight weeks or more asking everyone I knew to be in the video. That was before we shot, of course. Um, many of these people show up and a lot of the later videos again and again. So if you pay close attention, you will recognize them over and over. The warehouse owner initially wanted 1500 euros per day in rent, which would have been 3000 for the whole shoot. But uh, a friend of mine who also rented his storage space from this owner, uh, he called him and said something like, I don't know, come on, man. These are young artists, they have no money, and the thing is empty and it's old anyway. And then we got the whole place for 300 euros for the whole weekend. And the total budget of the video was only two and a half thousand euros, uh, most of which was spent on things like gas and catering for all the people involved. When I watched this video today, I am really, really amazed by how energetic it still is and how good and interesting everyone looks, even from today's point of view, because with hindsight, usually things start to look shitty. You might have seen it, Tanz 2, 3, 4.
The song Dirty Girls, Dirty Boys was already two years old, um, but still such a big hit in the clubs that I decided to do a video for it later. And obviously the video was supposed to, you know, depict the lyrics in some way, but it also needed to be clean enough for YouTube because I had learned my lesson from the girly show problems with the nipples. So we shot everything at a local bar called Zoe 2, which is owned by my friend Thomas. Uh, because one night I met him at the Kill, which is a local club here in Hamburg. And uh, he said to me at the bar, man, I love your tracks. If you ever need a location, I own a couple of bars and you can use them whenever you want for whatever you want. So uh, we shot Dirty Girls, Dirty Boys in two days at his bar. And uh, Marco Ribba was filming again. And this time I think over 50 people were, were involved, which was really tough for me at that time because I was producing, I was directing, and obviously also singing in the video. We added my friend, the ultimate MC, Sean Merez, as a little extra feature in the video, just for fun and to make it a little different from the song everyone knew. And even if you don't like the music or the general style, you probably have to agree that it's a good music video. Especially considering that it only costs 1700 euros to make, which really is nothing if you think about you know, everything that's involved with a production like that. And that's actually considered a big budget in industrial music. Anyway, if you know the video, I hope it's a cool trip uh, back to 2008 or nine, to a time when you either loved it or hated it, because I don't think there was much in between. Dirty girls make some noise, move that ass for dirty boys. Dirty boys, so obscene, like to see the girls extreme. Dirty girls make some noise, move that ass for dirty boys. Dirty boys, so obscene, like to see the girls extreme. Dirty girls make some noise, move that ass for dirty boys. Dirty boys, so obscene, like to see the girls extreme. Now is the time to be there. Now is the time to be there. Dirty girls, make some noise. Move that ass for dirty boys. Dirty boys. Now so is the time to be there. Dirty girls, make some noise. Move that ass for dirty boys. Dirty boys. Now is the time to be there. Dirty girls, make some noise. Move that ass for dirty boys. Dirty boys, so obscene. Like to see the girls extreme. Dirty girls, make some noise. Move that ass for dirty boys. Dirty boys, so obscene, like to see the girls extreme. Like to see the girls extreme.
The Horizon Born video is for the Electric Paradise Club edit, and it's not for the original orchestral version that's on the EP. I had no budget at all, so I spent some nights standing in the cold in Hamburg with my camera and my tripod and shooting these time lapses. But because this was 11 years ago, back then cameras did not have time lapse mode, at least mine didn't. So you had to take a long exposure photo and then the next and then the next and then the next and you do 30 of those for one second of video and then you place these individual photos into the editing software and they will play back like you see in the video. For the car shots we did some trickery um, to make it look good where I borrowed a huge Hummer from someone uh, I don't remember who it was actually so that the car would fill a lot of the screen because it had to be big. And then the inside shots of me driving and singing were shot inside my own car, which was much smaller. Um, the filming back then was done by my then girlfriend, Nicole, who was the same lady as the girl in the car of the Dirty Girls, Dirty Boys video. Horizon Born.
because all the budget for this album was spent for the Black Friday movie, I decided to record our live performance of our show at Agra Halle at Wave Gothic Treffen 2011. And I gave two very simple cameras to my friend Kerstin and to Daniel's girlfriend Elisa. And uh, they filmed the song from the press pit really well. They did a really good job. And there was also one stationary main cam at the back of the hall, and that was it. I later took all the footage from the three cams and added them together, and the video came out very, very energetic. Apparently, we left a great impression on the organizers at that show because the crowd went nuts and it was really packed. And uh, from then on, they always booked us for Agra Halle at VGT. It's the erste Single von Black Friday. Destroy, improve, rebuild! Destroy! Get up! Improve! Rebuild! 
Thank you. For this video, we used my friend Thomas's bar again. So the performance scenes were shot in the same location as the Dirty Girls video. It's like a corner, it shows up in the Dirty Girls video. We then mixed the performance scenes with scenes from the Black Friday short movie, short film, and because we had shot that earlier. And then we added dance performances by two ladies that I knew and that we filmed at the local Kur club on another day. And while I was really happy with the performances of the dancers, I have to say that industrial dance in general really only has very few moves. So I only edited very short cuts of the dancers because even though we had a lot of footage, I would have not had enough material that wouldn't have constantly repeated the same kinds of dance moves. Unfortunately, this has not changed at all 10 years later. So if you are doing industrial dance, please, please, please be the dancer who innovates some new moves or who incorporates different styles. Thank you. And this is the way to fuck God. This is the way to fuck God It's time to wake up, come on This is the way to fuck God This is the wake up call It's time to wake up, come on Wenn du noch nie beim Tanzen Gott gefickt hast Dann hast du noch nie getanzt
This is probably still one of my top three favorite videos. Uh, a bunch of people got really mad because I beat up the other bands, but I mean, of course I had contacted all these bands before and they really liked the idea for this kind of music video. I mean, who doesn't want to have his own video game character, even if you lose a little. I mean, everyone loses in video games. Boris May of Klangstabil directed and produced it, and all the bar scenes were once again shot at Zoe Bar. Man, I really owe uh, my friend, the owner, Thomas, so much. And the ladies that come in with me in the beginning are actual barkeepers from the bar, at least they were back then, and so is the lady in the video who gives me the bottle of vodka. Um, the video game machine, the case that you see in the bar, uh, that was built specifically for this video shoot by Boris himself. I don't know what, it, what if he still has it or not. And a few years later, Trev Nethers actually made the game, which is available for free download and can be played on PC, Mac, and I think on Android phones.
This video was part of a multimedia thing that we did where we had a 360 degree panorama online on my website where you could look around in all directions. And if you clicked on the studio computer, this music video would load and play. My buddy Klaus Friese did these great, great, great panorama pictures and it was very unique to have them in unusual places like a recording studio. Usually they were on mountains and in nature, but this way it really gives you the feeling that you were there. So we shot this video at uh, Florian Zikorski's studio. Florian is one of the guys in Sono and he's a top class, top class mixing engineer. And he was nice enough to let us use his place for an afternoon. So we did. And uh, in the video, you see Mark Akadipana, you know him. He wrote hardcore techno hits like I Like It Loud that Scooter did. And the ultimate MC, Sean Mares is there, who you know from the Dirty Girls video. And then there's my girlfriend, or my then girlfriend, Michelle. Older now. This sort of thing has cropped up before. And it has always been due to human error. This sort of thing has cropped up before. And it has always been due to human Another video with a 360 degree panorama and because we were trying to show typical places that I would be in we shot this in a hotel room because I was in hotel rooms pretty much not every weekend but a lot of weekends and my friend Melanie had the tough job of lying in bed for hours and hours in this video which was really hard work and uh, Sean Merez the ultimate MC was filming with a tripod and I wasn't just doing much, I was just sitting there. So this is not my favorite video, but when you shoot so many videos, and also when the Fistful of Fuck You video already had taken up 
all the budget for this album. You just do what you can. And that's what we did inside of me. This was part one of the 15 years of Faderhead 
music video throwback show. Sounds very 90s, doesn't it? I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you tune in again tomorrow. Please be a friend and tell a friend about it. See you then. Because I know you're dark now.